and I feel like right now a lot of my friends are becoming pregnant and having babies and even though I am so so happy and excited for them a little part of me is very sad Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. I know it's been a while since I just picked up the camera and talked to you guys, tell you everything that's been going on. And so our morning routine is, you know, wake up, have the kids have breakfast. Good morning. Good morning, Mom. <laughs> Good morning, Lennon. You love bacon? It's your favorite? Huh? Gummies. Gummies too? <gasps> you got gummies for breakfast? <laughs> I made them lunch today and then took summer on a walk or taking summer on a walk. Usually we walk around like a mile, mile and a half and then head home. Um, I usually listen to audiobooks. Um, if you guys know, I am working through a lot of like childhood trauma or just trauma in general. Um, I recommend the. I'm like panting, so I'll do a voiceover. So, if you know me or have been following me for a long time, you know that I've been trying to work on my own mental health specifically working through trauma I experienced as a first generation Asian American, feeling good enough, uh, feeling myself. So I recently read this book by Ofer Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry, MD, PhD, called What Happened to You. It talks about trauma and how it can cause you to respond in certain ways that are out of your control. I found that understanding those knee-jerk reactions or emotions helped change my perspective on who I was as a person and I highly recommend it. The next book I'm reading is called Waking the Tiger by Peter A. Levine. The book gives you exercises on how to reintegrate these traumatic emotions so that you can move past them rather than get stuck. Another book called Polyvagal Exercises for Safety and Connections also gives you some exercises with recentering the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve, but I found that one a little bit more dry and very science-based, but I just couldn't get through it. And if you guys are like, okay, Jenny, I get it. That's nice. You're working on your mental health, but I just need to escape. Well, I also have some book recommendations recommendations for you. Specifically, fiction, romance, novels is what I've been leaning more towards. So I've listened to a series called A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. This series gives me Harry Potter vibes with some spice. So like rated R for mature. And when I fell down this rabbit hole of book talk and started listening to all the smutty romance novels, guys, my life is forever changed. If you're into spicy romance books, then you must sign up for Audible. There's some smutty book recommendations on book talk that are exclusive to Audible, and I feel like we'd be missing out if we didn't sign up. If you want to try them for free, you can use our affiliate link below. This is absolutely free to you. Uh, we get a small commission for the recommendation, which helps support our family and this channel. But either way, I believe that Audible is a great service. They were the ones who actually led my mental health journey last year and introduced me to Brene Brown and her podcast, which is also only available on Audible. Bye, Wyatt. Bye, Bye. Mom. Mom, can you help me? Bye, Bye. You, 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 there's diamonds in your house. Okay. <laughs> okay, get in. All right, up next is my workout. Um, this outfit is from Amazon, but I love it so much. I've shown it before, but it makes your butt look so good. Anyways, um, yeah, so next I like to do everything that is hard or that absolutely needs to be done for myself in the morning. So whether that be journaling, exercising, um, just quiet time, walking summer, all those things like that make me feel good, I wanna do that for myself first 
because if I don't, then I just give, 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 give to everybody else. And then at the end of the day, there's not much more of me to give. And so I rather do it at the beginning of the day. I used to wake up at five, but it's way too dark right now and the kids are sleeping in. So I'm sleeping in for the time being. Maybe in the summer I'll start waking up earlier. So right now I'm waking up around uh, like six. But yeah. Okay, let's do this. Ooh, I'm excited. Look at these challenges. <laughs> They're all in costume. It is awesome. No more for me. No more straight coats. Ah. I'm out of the asylum. And I'm coming for you. Unless you work hard. Drop and push. If you don't get it all, you got here. <laughs> and I'm going to come to the screen. And I'm going to show you what came really like. Squeeze. Drop. <laughs> All right, we are all changed and ready for our medical Mondays. Here, let me show you what it looks like on my end. There you go, there's the camera set up. I have my little microphone and that's me. <laughs> so if you guys haven't been following us on Medical Mondays, it's just where I go on live stream and I answer your questions. It can be medical or non-medically related. It's just nice hanging out with you all and it's a, less stressful kind of thing than editing videos every week so i like it um this week we're going to talk about how to choose a subspecialty last week we talked about how to shine and stand out during interviews what are some of the questions you should be asking so yeah if you're not if you don't have notifications on if you're not joining us for this you are missing out all right this is like outfit change <laughs> number three i finished with the youtube live it was really nice talking to everybody we talked as i said we talked about like different subspecialties in medicine and how to pick and all the different things to consider a lot of people are going to worry about like work-life balance if they're able to start a family while they are in medicine and i feel like right now a lot of my friends are becoming pregnant and having babies and even though i am so so happy and excited for them a little part of me is very sad about my process of becoming pregnant and having children growing our family while in residency and med school I felt like I didn't get to enjoy it as much I was a really I want to say high strung but I was like very stressed a lot of the times I worked a lot of hours and even though uh, London's pregnancy was a lot better I still feel like I missed a lot. I didn't get to take much time off uh, during maternity leave because the United States has horrible maternity leave. Um, it's all unpaid and we just couldn't afford that given we had a family of four with no income if I didn't continue working. And so I went back to work when Wyatt was about eight weeks and then when London was seven weeks old. And so all my friends are taking three, four months at a time. And so it's it's a lot different now if I were to become pregnant again and then the pregnancy and the time off and spending time with your children. It's just a lot different. And I see them now and I'm just like, you guys are growing up so fast. And I love every moment of them like growing up that I feel like I missed. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I don't know how Stan feels about it because he was home most of the time with the kids. Do you care? I didn't even know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, if it, if, it was the per if I was choosing in a perfect world, then yeah, I'd prefer you to stay home. But given our scenario, I, would, I wouldn't change our scenario. We did the best with the... <laughs> with what we got yeah. so like in an ideal world I want people to be okay with having children during residency I want it to be normal hours which is like working 40 hours a week and extending residency if required and still like managing like being a mom having children and the whole mental aspect old mental health aspect of becoming a mom and taking care of a child in that first early stages or even during pregnancy so I feel like right now like medicine has a very misogynistic view on like what training is supposed to be like and what is okay and not okay or what is acceptable and not acceptable and I feel like it is our job to change that narrative 
I believe that when you are able to live your true self, you help pave the way for others to live theirs. All right, so it's going to be pho for dinner. And then if you go to the Asian store, sometimes they already have this prepackaged thing and you just toast it on the stove, put it in the little bag and then throw it in the soup base. We're using a Instapot, so then we put some bones in there, and then your meat, we're choosing oxtail, and then you also can put some of this in there. We usually get chicken, but there's only beef left, and so it's like a little soup base as well. Uh, what else do we do? We also char an onion, and then some ginger, and that's about it. And super easy, super simple, put it in the Instapot, and then you do it for like two hours, or an hour and a half. And now we wait. There are many things that I regret about being a new mom in medical school and in residency. One of those things was being too focused on graduating in time and graduating with my class when ultimately it didn't matter. I wish I felt more comfortable dipping into our savings and taking more time off to be able to spend more time during those early months when they are growing and changing drastically every day, to nurture a bond and give a sense of safety and closeness. Time is something that I would never be able to get back, but I also don't regret when we started our family. Many people in medicine wait too long and by the time they start trying, end up struggling with infertility. A 2016 survey from the female physicians in the Journal of Women's Health found that one in four were diagnosed with infertility. JAMA surgery article surveyed 692 surgeons found 42% had suffered a pregnancy loss. That is more than twice the rate of the general population. I believe that you should start your family whenever you are ready because there's really never a good time. Medicine can wait. Medicine will always be there. Your fertility may not. Don't be too attached to finishing training in any particular amount of time because learning never truly ends when you become an attending. In the now, I try to soak up all the little moments as much as I can. Every laugh, every tantrum, every sleepless night where all four of us end up being swooshed into a king-size bed. My perspective is, I get to do this. I get to be in these moments, and I know they are quickly fleeting, and it just makes me so grateful. And that's all I had for this video. I hope you found some time to slow down this week. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm. I get candy. You get candy. What? Not. Just you do. Just noodle. Uh, I order you do. Half the meat fell off his spoon. <laughs> Did you even eat any meat? No. No, London, you can't just eat soup. You gotta eat the noodles and the meat too. No. Yes. Oh no, no. Mommy, you guys. If you don't eat the noodles or the meat, you don't get any any. Any candy, Wendy? Mm -hmm. I need candy. No dessert. Who oh, did this one? No, London. <laughs> Stick to yourself. Don't put your food in Wyatt's stuff. Okay? Here. Yeah. <laughs>